Drivers getting into position here to stack things up for another 15 lap race, a 40 minute window. And so many passing opportunities here at VIR. 74 degrees trackside, it's gonna warm up throughout the day. Our next green flag for race three set to go at 125. Field set, getting things ready to go. I'll key on the flag man. They're two by two, 22 drivers deep here in USF Juniors. Elkin on the inside, McNeely on the outside. Field's good. And we are underway. Green, 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 racing. Down into turn number one. This could be an ugly one. A little bit of an issue there for McNeely. He'll go back a couple of spots. Brake lock up there up front. Jack Jeffers on the outside. He's trying to find a way through as well. He lost a little bit from his starting position, but he'll, I think, come out P4. Everybody else clean and green coming through. Elkin's going to be able to hold on to the spot. And although he didn't get a fantastic start, McNeely fighting his way up to third. It was Soto Sharipa who goes from third up into second. One driver well off the racetrack there further back. Not quite sure which driver that was from mid-pack, but he's going to go near to the tail of the field. Not exactly sure who that was. Might have been Vagara. I'm not quite sure there. We'll see as they come back through. We'll give you a full field rundown when they come around to get lap number one in the books, but here's that first big run down the straightaway under the bridge through seven, eight, and nine. A little bit of a rhythm section back and forth still full throttle back down the hill over here to oak bend that's turn number 10 you'll see drivers go off drivers right there occasionally are carrying a lot of speed and down back over to the famous oak tree corner turn 11 turn 12 and the big run up the straightaway the draft plays such a, cr a crucial role here likely half a second to a full second here they come again up the straightaway you can see the two Inter MS cars up front. Soto Sharipa on the gearbox of his teammate Elkin. They currently sit first and fifth in the points. 34 points between the two of them. You know that Soto Sharipa would love to get his first win. Second place yesterday to third place finishes at Barber Motorsports Park over almost two months ago. It's been a while. They've been on the fence here, on the, uh, the bench rather, for the drivers here and juniors. Many of them running in USF 2000, kind of tasting the waters for 2025 getting some extra seat time. And again, here they come on the straightaway back up. Here's your opening lap. Everybody lining up, bit of a gap from fourth back to fifth. That's Jeffers back to Ingrata. You can see a four driver breakaway right now. Big move to the inside. McNeely gonna take the move on. Soto Sharipa to the inside, book it. But can he hold it coming out of the corner? They're side by side coming out of turn number two. Max Taylor, we believe, the driver who went off in turn number three, that last lap. So Taylor has fallen all the way down to 21st. Winner yesterday, off in turn number two and three, and he goes back near to the tail of the field. It is Elkin, Soto Sharipa, one, two, crossed the line, but McNeely making the move to go to second. Soto Sharipa in third, Jeffers fourth, and Grata fifth, sixth, Argero, seventh, Scorpioni, eighth, Weldon. Uh, Weldon, who started back in uh, 12th, Plus four on the opening circuit. Good lap for uh, Sebastian, the VRD driver now up into the eighth spot. Joshua Lionel goes up into ninth from 11th. And Christian Cant, rather, Bruno Ribeiro dropping a couple of spots. Sixth back to 10th. Taylor, we talked about, started in ninth, crossed the line in 21st. Outside the top 10, Christian Cameron 11th. Alejandro Junco's in uh, 12th. Guio and the Gonzalez brothers. 13th, 14th, 15th. Uh, Michael Boyantis up into 16th. Potter, 17th. Martella, Carell, Golan, Taylor, Vagara, Suko. 23 drivers on the field. Trying to figure which driver actually on track. I only had 22 listed on, on uh, the entry list, but that was uh, the grid, but that was because I think one driver might have had some trouble in qualifying as well. I'll try to figure out which what driver that was. But nonetheless, everybody's settling in. I think it was Michael Boadzis, who I didn't have on top of my on my uh, my starting list here, but he has worked his way up nicely from up into 16th. Great job from 23rd to, to 16th in the opening circuit. Liam McNeely's gone to P1. You'll see him coming across the line here now, down into turn one. Liam McNeely, winner at Nola Motorsports Park earlier this year. How about side by side Inter MS? Wow. Elkin on the inside, Soto Sharip on the outside. Jack Jeffers right there, P4, seeing it all happen. Jeffers going to try the over-under. Thinking about the inside. No, had to back out of it coming through three. Had a big look to the inside there at NASCAR Bend. Thought about it. 
You see drivers two, three wide further back. There's a good little scrap between one with, uh, I believe, a Scorpione and Weldon in the further back as well. Patricio Gonzalez trying to find a way by Diego Guillo. Ribeiro, Cameron, and Junkos, 9th, 10th, and 11th, all turning their quick lap there. So available to get out there and get rolling. Once you get into the draft, sometimes you're held up a bit because you know that it's pass or be passed. Or do I just tuck in? Do I, do I hang out here right now and try to break away? A couple of packs of four. McNeely, Elkin, Soto, Sharipa, and Jeffers up front. Then you see that next group trying to push their way up, trying to see if they can get the draft off of Jeffers. That's Ingrata, Argyros, Scorpioni, and Weldon. After the top eight, over a second back to Bruno Ribeiro running in ninth. But again, the draft plays such a role here. Early going of a 15-lapper, 40-minute time window here for USF Juniors. Round number seven, around six, seven, and eight here this weekend. From here we go to mid-Ohio where the entire USF Pro Championships ladder will be on display. We'll have juniors, F2000, and Pro2000 all supporting the NTT IndyCar Series at Mid-Ohio. Doubleheader for USF Juniors there. And Grada is bringing Argyros and Weldon along with them. Scorpioni as well. They're closing up here on Jeffers. I talked to Jeffers after the race yesterday. They think they just missed a little bit on the setup, but they were pretty sure that, that what they wanted to change to get him where he needed to be here. Look at that action further back. Man, that's Taylor trying to come back forward. Remember, Max Taylor, who had that issue, fell back. He is uh, marching his way forward, I believe, now into 16th. He may have just gotten by Rodrigo Gonzalez. Actually, maybe a couple other spots up as well. Taylor on the recovery. Third place coming in in points, just 14 markers behind Ariel Elkin. So recovery for Taylor, who already has two USF 2000 wins on the season at Indianapolis uh, and Road America last weekend, as we had mentioned in the pre-race show. Liam McDealy doing a good job up front, leading the way. See the front three drivers trying to stretch away a little bit. Jack Jeffers having trouble staying with McNeely, Elkin, and Soto Sharipa. It is early in the running, though. Lap four right now. Now that one little mistake there. I think we may have had a pass for the inter MS team. I think maybe Soto Sharipa has gone into second. Whatever happened at the top of the hill there in 14, opened the door a bit for Jeffers to get right back onto the gearbox. You'll love that coming down the straightaway, getting that full pull. Driver's gone off, way off track, coming out of turn 17, has looped it around. We have a driver off on the outside of the racetrack, turn 17. Jeffers looking to the outside now on Soto Sharipa. I think he's got the spot when you're on the outside there, coming over to turn number two and three. He is on the inside position. Make that move for Jeffers. He'll go to third. Jack Jeffers up to P3, coming through turn number four, getting the pass done on Soto Sharipa. That's going to bring Eden and Grada in. Unsure whether the driver off in turn number 17 has been able to continue. I think that might have been Michael Boyadis, who started at the tail, worked his way up to 16th, and then off in turn 17 has dropped him back. He has not come across the line to put lap number four in the book, so he may still be off track. Way off track, though. He uh, drove quite a ways off, and here he is now. Yep. So Boyan is able to get back onto the racetrack. I want to say he was running up, I think, at the 12th position. Dude, he had moved up a couple of spots. He ends up going backwards. Tough one for Boyadis. His teammate, Liam McNeely, still leading the way. But look at this battle here. Uh, Jeffers, I think, trying to go for P2. Jack Jeffers on the inside. Here they come into the breaking zone at turn number 14. Jeffers on the inside, Elkin on the outside. How will they emerge from turn 14 and down through the roller coaster?
Indeed, Jack Jeffers through to take over second spot. Jeffers now will defend down the inside. Look at this action further back. Guess who's up into the fight? Sebastian Weldon has arrived in the number 98. Started back at 12th. Marching it forward for Weldon. Look at this. He's to the inside of Soto Sharifa, but the over-under coming back the other way. Oh, can't quite get it done. Going to work here on Soto Sharifa right now. Jeffers trying to see if he can't get away from Elkin to see if they can't chase down Liam McNeely. Five laps in, still 10 to go. Only through the first third of this race. Man, it is kind of separating out. You can see as they come through turn number uh, three and four, the different battles we have deeper in the field. Saw back there a little bit was the fight with uh, Anthony Martella, Gonzalez, Carell, Vergara. All right there. Hudson Potter there as well. Back down into Oak Tree. Oh, we had one driver drop a wheel further back, and that may be a spin. It was five. Count it, four. Being told a driver going around in turn number five as well. Number 70. Not number 70, sorry. I was told number 77, we don't have a 77, so I'll figure out, some, we had a driver spinning a five, but somebody just went off over an oak tree. It might have been Weldon. Not quite sure here at this point here. Okay. So a potential driver high-sided over in turn number five. We'll figure out how this plays out here, folks. So we may be going to full course yellow. We are. Full course yellow driver is high-sided. And like I said, I think that might have been Sebastian Weldon potentially who went off. I watched they come across the front straightaway. Yeah, I think Weldon may have dropped the wheel over. No, no, he's, no, that's a Scorpione. A Scorpione's up a spot here now. So the 67, we're told. <laughs> we don't have a 67. We'll figure out. That's uh, one of our corner workers trying to call it in here for the incident in turn number five. So we apologize for the, the uh, miscommunication. We'll try to figure out which driver it is coming down. It's going to be, I think, the seven. The seven of a Aiden and Grada, I believe. The seven of Aiden and Grada. That's the driver who went off. was high centered over in turn number five. So what a, some action in the top ten, first and foremost. Weldon has dropped all the way back to 21st. This yellow for Ingrata, actually a huge uh, positive for Weldon after the spin. The crazy fact is that had they gone green to the end, he would have probably finished near the very tail of the field or would have lost even more spots. Aiden and Grata high centered. So there's the shot there over an oak tree. That He is out. That is Weldon out of the race right now. I don't know if he's beached over there, whatever it may be, but he is done. That's a second race in a row that Weldon has found himself off the racetrack. Tough one yesterday, finishing 21st, and that is where he is. Uh, actually, he's going to fall down to 22nd now. Potentially falling to the tail of the field. They're going to get Aiden and Grata back onto the racetrack unless there's damage. The input I got was high-centered over in turn number five. But I also saw a tow truck getting sent out. That's likely for Weldon. We'll find out whether or not Ingrata is able to continue. But th both those drivers were in the top ten. And Grotta was running, I want to say, 6th or 7th. So the driver off in turn 11 is Sebastian Weldon. So here's your full field rundown right now. Let's have a look here on the, as we are on a yellow right now. Six laps down. They'll put lap 7 in when they come back around here. Liam McNeely. P1, Jack Jeffers in second after a great overtake. Augusto Soto Sharipa in third. Ariel Elkin now fourth. There's uh, a lot of action there between, I, I believe, I'm not sure who the contact was. It was, or, was there any contact with Weldon? All I saw from our shot was the dust coming up as he dropped the left side wheels. But that moves Soto Sharipa to third. Elkin fourth. Leonardo Scorpioni now up into fifth. G3 Argeros in sixth spot. Bruno Ribeiro seventh. Christian Cameron eighth. Leandro Hunkos ninth. And after following to the tail of the field, Max Taylor has worked his way up into 10th. Not only has he come to 10th, two drivers in front of him off on that lap. Yellow flag back out. 
Taylor's going to get a chance to attack from 10. So this is actually playing nicely into the hands of Taylor after a minor miscue on the opening circuit. Diego Guillo currently 11th. Joshua Alianel 12th. Patricio Gonzalez in 13th. Brady going 14th. Anthony Martella up to 15th. Rodrigo Gonzalez in 16th. Timothy Carell 17th. Joao Vaguerra 18th. Hudson Potter, Michael Succo. Michael Boyadis, after his off and turn 17, remains on the lead lap, and the good for him, he'll get a chance to get to the tail of the field again. So we essentially stack him and repack him here over in uh, turn number 11 for the issue in 11. So let's redo this. The drivers come down through the roller coaster, through 14A, down into... 15, 16, and 17. McNeely, power move early to get around Ariel Elkin. Fourth place in points coming in. Back by 22. Elkin with the bonus point for winning the Continental Tire Pole Award. 500 bucks along, the, uh, along with that. And again, one thing I will say, we'll look at this. I don't have it in front of me now, but let me grab some notes. Thinking of lap times, Elkin to 53.8. So what are we at for lap times right now? 55. Yeah, nobody's got down to a, a lap time that I think is going to change where they are on the racetrack. What about, let's go a little deeper. Yeah, I don't think we've had fast lap times yet that could potentially change the grid. I said before, qualifying two was a mess for USF Juniors. If you watch that here on the YouTube channel, it was messy. Uh, drivers playing the strategy game of trying to get out on track, slowing, trying to find the right person, crawling around the track. Who am I going to partner up with? Race control was not happy at all. There was a number of incidents where drivers were at full speed, full song, having to check up big time. There were so many drivers who impeded. It, it was almost to the position where we probably could have DQ'd the whole field. You'll see some rule changes coming down, I think, because of that, to, to make sure we stop that. But... What that happened is we had a couple of red flags during Q2. And simple fact is that a number of drivers, fast drivers, didn't have really strong second fast laps. So we're going to keep looking at the fast. Time. Fastest laps we're seeing right now, 154.7 for Bruno Ribeiro. There's a lot of drivers with their second fastest lap. It's you know, a second, second and a half off, even more of their best lap for qualifying too. So there are a number of drivers who are likely going to get their fastest lap here in race number two to set the grid for race three. Seven laps down. Looking at a couple of my screens. Looked like they have the car potentially of Ingrata brought into the inner loop part of the racetrack here, just on the other side of the bridge on the back start, the, uh, the first of the two straightaways between six and seven. Field comes through there now. You can see the lower part of the racetrack. Possibility we may be able to go green flag racing this time by, otherwise one more yellow, but we'll see how it plays out here. The 98 of Sebastian Weldon into his pit box. Out of the gravel in the back part of the racetrack over in turn number 11, but got back to the pit box here. He is now two laps down. So even by turning one lap, one more lap on the racetrack will allow him. Actually, no, he's ahead of Aiden and Grada already. The car of Ingrata, not just high centered, but with damage. Potential contact, not quite sure exactly who the contact was with. Race control looking at that. I'm sure they'll have a, a look at it. That'll be part of the debrief between race two and race three before we make race two official. There was, as we know, if you watched a couple of instances of contact that were, that, uh, Ended up with some penalties. Contact between Ariel Elkin and Liam McNeely in race number one. McNeely was, went well off in turn one, but was able to come back on the racetrack, eventually finishing in seventh spot. Race officials putting Ariel Elkin behind him in eighth. New uh, front wing for Weldon. He'll go back out on track. At this point, circulate as much as you can. Potential, uh, any other attrition would give him a, a point or two more. And that championship chase, you remember, we're, we're going to get down to it. you got to get as many laps as you can. You got If you can get even one more position, you don't know what it's going to be like when we get to Portland 
at the end of August for the championship. As they run right now, six drivers kind of working their way forward in the championship fight. Elkin, Weldon, Taylor, McNeely, Soto, Sharipa, and Jeffers. Jeffers now 41 points behind Elkin from P1. But from Jeffers back to Leandro Junco's in seventh, that's 33 points as well, just, to, just in that one spot. So kind of seeing six drivers ready to battle out over the second half of the season. Elkin obviously with his two wins at Barber. Weldon, a couple of wins at NOLA. Max Taylor the win yesterday. Liam McNeely the win at, at, uh, at NOLA, race, race number two. And then, of course, Soto Sharipa and Jeffers. Neither of those drivers have the wins. Podium at Barber and yesterday for Jeffers. So the consistency has him in it. But, of course, as, they, as we know, all these guys want to start winning some races. We will go green this time by. Back at it. We'll put lap eight in the books. We'll cross the halfway point as the green flag will fly as they come out of turn number 17. And I'll tell you, there it is. Green flag flying, and away we go. Soto Sharipa immediately looking to see if he can't go around the outside of Jeffers. He's going to do the same thing. Jeffers to make it a bid for the lead. Jeffers goes to the outside, coming through turn number one. Tries to get the run out of turn number one. They're side by side. Check this out. Out of two. Over to three. Who's going to come out with it? Little bit of breakup contact. Jeffers is off. Jeffers and Elkin both off and into the tires on the exit of turn number three. Not sure what happened there, but two drivers off and three. Elkin and Jeffers. As they fought for the lead on the restart, we'll see a full course yellow contact in turn number three. So everybody was fighting for positions coming through th over through two and th through turn two over to turn number three. That double apex essentially left hander and contact between those two drivers. All of a sudden, Jeffers was sideways. I don't know if there was contact from the tail on Jeffers or what it may have been. Field, of course, will. Circulate around track. We'll find out what happens here in terms of how things shook out before that yellow came out. Race control will be on the cameras for sure. They have to figure out where every driver was essentially on the track or they revert back to the timeline, the first timeline. So we'll see how it plays out here. But two drivers right in the middle of the fight. They were second and third. Jeffers went to the outside of McNeely. They were stacking it up coming into turn number two and three. It did not play out for the driver who leads the points and the driver who was sixth. Still one more race to come, as we know. You wonder about the damage because they're going to have to go to work. We are on track in about, what, three hours from now. False grid opens up at, uh, at 12.55, so just over an hour and a half or two and a half hours, rather, for false grid. So the teams will go to work. Ambulance actually rolling as well, so you wonder if one of the drivers is okay. We'll see what we can get here. And indeed, the two cars involved, Ariel Elkin and Jack Jeffers. That's going to move Augie Soto Sharipa to P1, McNeely in second, Scorpione up to third, Argyros fourth, Ribeiro in fifth, Cameron sixth, Hunko's in seventh, Taylor, Max Taylor out to eighth, Diego Guillo ninth, and Joshua Lionel in the top ten. There's Jeffers out of the car, and there is Ariel Elkin climbing. So that is two really good signs. Both drivers climbing out of the car. Even though the ambulance arriving on the scene, Jeffers already taken the gloves off. Elkin climbing out as well, under his own power, which is fantastic to see after the contact hitting the wall there out of turn number three, the first Left-hander of three. Man, close quarters racing. Both drivers, you can see the dejection. Potential podium finishes up front. So a number of drivers benefiting from this one. Two of the front runners out. And you think championship as well, this is going to give two spots 
to Sebastian Weldon if he's able to continue. Now, he's 22nd right now. Jefferson Elkins, he's going to go up to 20th. And we're not done yet. And, I, and I, I, it's not like it's a huge benefit for Weldon. A couple points, though. You never know, again, what happens in the end when you're battling for one or two points for a championship. And depending on how it plays out, I think Elkin, I would say he may still end up with the lead, but Taylor's still there. McNeely's got a chance for a win. If Soto Sharipa gets the race win here, he'll go up to 133 points at, at the very least. So race control calling a red flag. I just don't think they, you know, we don't want the drivers circulating around the racetrack under yellow. There's the Machina Elkin. Left rear damage, as you can see there. The right side looks pretty good, but left rear damage. Rear wing, of course. Front wing looks pretty good. But we'll get that car up on the flatbed. Then they'll be able to grab the number 92 of Jeffers. And ideally get these things back to the paddock, right? We've got a quick turnaround. The teams can go to work pulling off the broken parts and assessing the damage and then getting the car put back together. First and foremost, though, both drivers are okay. So let's just say that, first and foremost. That's fantastic. They were both able to get out of the cars under their own power. Get them back on the racetrack for race number three. And listen, this is this is hardcore wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing for a championship. There's a lot up for grabs here. We talk a lot about that in, in terms of this program. The juniors racing for a scholarship to move to USF 2000 valued at over $263,000, all part of a $1.68 million package. And they're racing, they're racing hard. They're going for race wins here, you know. Two wide, three wide. Again, not sure whether there was contact or not. All of a sudden, Jeffers went into a big spin. I have to believe there was some kind of contact with Jeffers. That car just looped around on the entry to the first left-hander of turn three. Once again, folks, big thank you to all our partners here as part of the USF Pro Championships presented by Continental Tire. This is the Continental Tire VIR Grand Prix. VP Racing Fuels is huge. Skip Barber Racing School, all a big part of what we do. Skip Barber, of course, their Formula Race Series running here this weekend as well. They're kind of working to their halfway point of their program. Drivers there compete for over a half a million dollars in prizes, including that $100,000 scholarship that will move their champion to USF Juniors in 2025. Those of you watching online, thinking about the Skip Barber program, seven weekend, 14 race series. They run on some fantastic tracks for sure. Car on track here this weekend, the My Gal, 160 horsepower, turbo engine, paddle shift, six speed. Great program. A lot of great coaching. And we're looking forward to seeing their champion move up here to USF Juniors next year, following in the footsteps of Sebastian Weldon, who won that title last year. So red flag. Drivers will eventually work their way back here into pit lane. Nine laps down. When we get back onto the racetrack and we do go green, we'll put 10 in the book, so... We'll have a five-lap dash till the end of this one here, or not, because uh, time ticking away. 12 minutes remaining. I think we'll be tight on time. They're doing their best they can to get these cars locked down here right now. There's the car of uh, Ariel Elkin. They're securing that to the flatbed. They'll get him back in. You can see the damage there to the, the left rear. Significant contact there. That'll be a full suspension setup. I'm sure they're now hooking up the car of Jack Jeffers. Yeah, I believe they've got Jack up on the hook now. You can see that to the right side of the screen. There it is. We'll have a better look at it here. Right rear damage for Jeffers, the wing as well. Again, these cars all designed for that impact to get absorbed by the parts on the car, whether it's the suspension pieces, because it's going to be right rear and left rear for Jack Jeffers, whether it's the suspension pieces or the shear points where they mount onto the gearbox themselves or the tub of the car. Exclusive Autosport crew got to go to work, as does Inter MS, to get these cars ready to go for race number three. Again, false grid opening. Uh, at 1255, closing at 110. So they're going to have significant amount of time 
to get ready to go, but they'll get those these cars back to the paddock area. Augusto Soto Sharipa will be the leader. Liam McNeely in second. Leonardo Scorpioni for a Zanella Racing, standing in trouble up to third. G3R Giro's trying to do the same. He's up into fourth. Bruno Robera running fifth. Christian Cameron sixth. Leandro Hunkos in seventh. Max Taylor eighth. Diego Guillo and Jeshua Lee now rounding out the top ten. Drivers involved in incidents. Turn five a couple laps ago. Aiden and Grada. Sebastian Weldon offered a separate incident over in turn number 11, but he has put a front wing on. And we'll, once they go back to green, we'll move from 22nd to 20th as Elkin will finish 22nd, Jeffers 21st. It's going to take a little bit of time for the crew to get these tires back into position as well. That's one thing we haven't really had a chance to mention yet. The impact into the tires that are lining the Armco on the outside of turn number three took that impact and we're pushed out of place with so the crew getting those back into the right spots. Outside the top 10, Patricio Gonzalez in 11th, Brady Gole in 12th, Anthony Martella 13th, Rodrigo Gonzalez 14th, Timothy Carell, Joao Vagara, Hudson Potter, Michael Succo, and Michael Boadis, the drivers remaining on the lead lap. Nine laps down, six to go. Lap 10, of course, will go in the books when we get rolling. So again, we do have it. And I'm looking here. Time remaining is actually stopped. They've red flagged the time as well. Skip Barber, race number one, will follow. They're doing the best they can to get these tires into position. They get back at it here. Augusto Soto Sharipa, able to get out of that one. But again, like I said, was there contact from behind? I saw a pretty quick spin on, on Jeffers coming into three, like there may have been contact from behind. His spin then took him, I believe, into Elkin. We don't have the replay capabilities here right now to give you another look at it. So whether or not from behind, whether it was sort of Sharipa or McNeely potentially from behind making contact, that's what all the cameras we have around this track is for, and I guarantee that our race control will be having a look at that. Just stepped away from the headset there for a second to talk to our race control to get a feel for what's happening here. They're saying potential 10 minutes of wall repair. As we know, we're on, a, uh, to a certain extent, a time-specific schedule here. Right behind us is the Skip Barber Formula Race Series. We're able to work with them as a partner to potentially give us a little extra room. There is a nice big window there uh, for Skip Barber. They have... Um, quite a bit of time lined up for their 25-minute race. So essentially, trying to get this wall done as quickly as possible. We have stopped the time. We're hoping to try to get the final six laps in, but we may not get all six. We may be up against a, a time limit. So we may not get all six laps, but the focus is to go back to green flag racing, to get at least a number of green flag laps in, as opposed to calling it now, because there is time for us to play with. So the crew's doing the best they can to get this uh, track back to the point where we can go racing. Against Augusto Soto Sharipa, very impressive. Able to get his way up to the front through that chaos. McNeely second, Scorpioni, Argeros, Ribeiro third. Contact as we know in that corner, so I guarantee the... Uh, <laughs> the video will be drawn. Folks, stay with us right now. As again, we talked about it. We are going to work on getting this uh, 
the wall fix. When we get back, we'll go back to racing. Don't go anywhere. More USF Juniors coverage here on the YouTube channel. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Over the years, we've chased down a lot of dreams, each one leading to the next, all the way to our most electrifying dream yet. Introducing the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue. Made to inspire the newest generation of dreamers so they can make their dreams reality. The all-new, all-electric Prologue from Honda. Shout out to the VIR crew. We're back at it. Drivers have fired up those engines and pulled back out onto the racetrack. Augusto Soto Sharipa for Inter MS leading the way. Jay Howard Driver Developments, Liam McNeely in second. Leonardo Scorpioni for Zanella Racing in third. G3R Giros fourth yesterday. That's where he runs on track right now for Jay Howard Driver Development. And then Bruno Romero for D Force Racing. Rounding out the top five. Christian Cameron, sixth, Leandro Junco, seventh, Max Taylor, eighth, Diego Guillo, ninth, and Joshua Alianel, tenth. Lap number 11 will go in the books. They just came across start finish line, so that's lap 10. I believe lap 11 will be the next way by, so it should be four to go. So we likely be able to sneak this one in, folks, all four laps in. Let's cross our fingers, the drivers keep their heads about them, and Run clean to the end of this one. There is an opportunity, remember folks, for drivers to make up points here right now. The point leader, first and second in points coming in to this race, Elkin and Weldon are gonna finish 22nd and likely 20th. 22nd for Elkin, 20th for Weldon after his incident. This is an opportunity for everybody behind them, Taylor, McNeely, Soto Sharipa, not Jeffers now, but Hunko's even, to close back up a little bit. So I'll get another update from race control. We are expecting to finish with the laps. As I said before, on pit lane, once they cross start finished leaving pit lane, they put lap 10 in the books. This one coming back to get the green is gonna be 11, so there'll be four racing laps still to go. 12 minutes and 48 seconds on the clock. I think we should be okay to sneak it in here with all four racing laps provided. We don't have another altercation and another full course yellow. Soto Sharipa, McNeely, Scorpioni, Ardrosum Ribeiro. You wonder whether or not any communication coming into Soto Sharipa or to McNeely. Hey, listen, let's get a finish. You know, we're close. Right now, McNeely behind Elkin by 22 points. 20, yeah, 22 points. That could be the difference right now. He could essentially get himself almost into the point lead. Soto Sharipa looking to make a big jump here as well. But racers are racers, as we know. Visor down. The opportunities to pass, especially we're still early in the season. I hate to say that we're not past the halfway point yet. It's normally past the halfway point when drivers even talk about the championship. They'll always give you the line that I'm just going to win races and let the championship take care of itself. But I always think that when, when we're in the middle of a, a battle in the final round of the year and there's one or two point difference, had you not thrown one away earlier in the season, you might be in a better spot.
Lining them up down the back straightaway, coming into turn number 14. We'll see how this one all plays out. Again, back on track this afternoon for a 125 green flag. Race number three on the triple header here at the Continental Tire VIR Grand Prix. Who's going to come away with this one? It'll be four to go when they get back to the line and see that green flag. Lots can happen here. Four more circuits around this long 3.27 mile circuit. It's long, it's fast, the draft is crucial. Flowing for sure. Big start there. And away we go. McNeely on the outside. No, that's, where's McNeely? What happened to Leah McNeely? That's Argyros. And big move down the inside for Leonardo Scorpioni. What happened to McNeely? He's fallen down to 19th. Something on that outlap for McNeely, an issue. Leah McNeely has fallen down. Being told potentially telling him to move back for avoidable contact, so there could have been a penalty set down for McNeely. Wow. Bunch of dust coming up there, coming through three, four, back through five on this opening circuit. Again, restarts a great opportunity to get overtakes, to, to surprise the driver in front of you. That's when you get aggressive. Augusto Soto Sharipa, though, with the lead, looking for that first win in USF Juniors, a number of them last year in F4. Coming through Oak Tree. Here they come again. Long back straightaway run. Soto Sharipa hoping he's had a chance to potentially gap Leonardo Escorpioni. Rookie driver, Escorpioni. Won one of the Academy Winter Series races earlier this year, but this is a brand new team. Zanella Racing, Jose Zanella and Ernie Ganella. Zanella with a extensive career in karting, still plays a big role. Zanella Racing, a huge karting team in South Florida, builds a lot of racing engines, develop a lot of great drivers. They made the move here to USF Juniors, expand their own internal ladder system. We may even see them in USF 2000 next year. Soto Sharipa trying to lay down good laps. It'll be lap 12 this time by, three laps remaining. Scorpioni digging, so is G3 Argyros. He's looking for his first podium, coming off a of top four yesterday. Does he make a move to the inside? They're closing up a bit. Soto Sharipa, P1, Scorpioni, Argyros, Bruno Romero working his way back up here. Started sixth, fell back, worked his way up forward. Taylor fifth. Remember, Taylor was all the way down at like 19th or 20th after that off early in the race. He has fought back to fifth. This is going to be huge for Taylor with three of the front runners out. Weldon, Jeffers, Elkin. All to tail the field. Like I say, you never know what happens in these USF Pro Championships. All it takes is one bad weekend. And you find yourself at the tail of the field. This is going to be two DNFs for Weldon, the driver who was a dominant factor in the first two races. So the first three at, at NOLA then was strong as well with a podium at Barber. Had a great lead coming in here. Soto Sharipa, though, looking for his first win. Got the opportunity to run with Inter MS this year. Not one of the young guns, 24 years of age. So indeed, confirming that uh, McNeely, avoidable contact, he's now worked his way back up to 17th being told that the 17 of Leo Hondro Hunkos may be high-sided high somewhere on the racetrack. And indeed, full course yellow. We have a driver who has got high-sided somewhere on the racetrack, full course yellow. The pace car is waiting for him, the yellow flag at start-finish. I believe this will very likely end this one, unless they're able to get it done quickly. Ah, oh, we'll get a, we got a shot here on the camera, folks. Hard for me to see outside of turn number one. If we can flick over to that camera shot here. 
There's a good, th there it is there as well. So outside of turn one, super hard to see from the camera angles that we had. That's Leandro Hunkos, we think, in the number 17. Yeah, falling down the order as well. Interestingly, this may give Weldon another position. G3 Argero is able to get around to Scorpione as well, I believe. I'm not sure whether or not the official pass. But out the outside of the racetrack, in the gravel, is Hunkos. Man, a lot of action here. That's lap 13. Unless we're able to go back to green flag racing this next time by, which I don't see based on where he is right now, this race could be done. So we're hoping for four green flag laps. We didn't get them. So we're going to see the white flag when they come back around. And indeed, they're still working on trying to hook up the car of Hunkos. So as they run, and this, they're the, yeah, they, they're just pulling him out here right now. I don't know that they're going to be able to, well, maybe. Do we get a one-lap battle? They got him back out onto the racetrack. If he can fire and continue, he's going to be down a lap. He's on the racetrack. It is fired. So he's back going. And the, the field's only crawling down the back, the, the first of the two straightaways. <laughs> we may be going back to green. So he, I was ready to call it. But great job again for the crew to get him out there. We may have a one-lap battle. Soto Sharipa, Argeros, Scorpioni, Ribeiro, and Taylor top five. A Lionel's up to sixth. Guio seventh. Golan eighth. Martella ninth and Timothy Carell in 10th. So confirmed, green and white, this time by a one lap dash to see who comes away with the win. You can be sure that Agi Soto Sharipa was sitting there saying no. Not back to green. I've got this. End under yellow. We'll take it. More work to be done. But again, let's put let's let's just throw this out here. Elkin, point leader coming in, 22nd. Weldon, second place of points coming in. At the very best, will be 20th, maybe 19th. Max Taylor has fought his way back up to fifth. Max Taylor is going to get a chance to potentially take over the point lead here. Maybe not quite, but close. Liam McNeely. Well, folks, let's call that one off. A car, something's happened, damage off in turn number eight, I'm being told. So on the back straightaway, we have a driver off the racetrack. We are not going to be able to go back to green. I'm trying to figure out who it is. Uh, number 95, Anthony Martella, we believe. Potentially damage or something's wrong with him on the back straightaway. Coming to a stop. Martella with an issue. So something happened when they were driving in order. And he has stopped. So we are done. Yellow flag will not come in. We will not go green flag racing. And I believe lap 14 will go in the books, and that will be it. Disappointment for us being able to potentially watch a battle. And then for Martella, who was running ninth. It would have been his second consecutive top 10. And Martella, an issue. Wow. Wow. This one was a mess, too. A little chaos here today. It's awesome. Fantastic racing. Great side-by-side -side stuff. But that incident on the restart, we know this, folks. Cautions breed cautions. It's a well-known term in motorsports. It happens. And there's the crew going to work here on Martella. Not sure what happened to Anthony to be stopped. Oh, there's 
That's left. That's a that's a left front up in the air. So there must have been some kind of contact during the while well, they were running around the racetrack on the yellow flag lap. We're actually going to throw the checkered flag right now, folks. We know we were up in, uh, we were up against it on time. So checkered flag flying, and indeed Augusto Soto Sharipo will win his first one. G3 Argeros, his first podium in USF Juniors competition. Leonardo Scorpioni, the same here in official USF Juniors racing. Three rookies on the podium, Soto Sharipa, Argeros, and a Scorpioni. Bruno Romero coming back up into fourth spot. Max Taylor, fifth. Christian Cameron, sixth. Jeshua Elianel in seventh. Diego Guillo, eighth. Brady Goal in the ninth. And we'll wait for them to come back around. I'm not sure who is actually. It might be Joao Vagara in the tenth position. Unbelievable. No, Timothy Carell. Timothy Carell up into 10th. The live timing is corrected itself. Timothy Carell for Jay Howard in 10th. Vergara, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, and Patricio and, and Rodrigo. McNeely up to 14th. Potter is 15th. Boyadis, 16th. Suko, 17th. Martella, 18th. Weldon, 19th. Hookos, Jeffers, Elkin, Ingrata. Wow, there is uh, a lot to unpack from that one. Chaos on the racetrack, a wreck on the restart, an incident between two drivers on the pace lap, essentially, while cruising around in yellow, we have contact between two drivers. That's going to be looked at by race control, that's for sure. Wow. Hey, but again, there's going to be people that are happy, and it's going to be Augusto Soto Sharipa. So, again, with... Elkin down in 22nd, M maybe a couple of points. Soto Sharipa is going to get at least 30. He's going to go to 33. I don't. He's not going to be able to jump up. I don't think over Weldon. They may be very close. Weldon in 19th. Yeah, this is wild. The way this is shaken down, like this championship again. People thought, you know, you'll, you'll see the way things come out of the gate. There's been so much going on right now. It's just absolutely unbelievable to me. So Weldon running in 19th will get two points. 30 points for Soto Sharipa. I think he and Weldon are going to be tied. Weldon and Shri uh, Soto Sharipa, I think, are going to be tied. I don't know if it's going to be for second or not because Max Taylor is looking good. Taylor finishing in that fifth spot. That's worth 17 points. He's going to go to 140. I think Max Taylor is going to take over the point lead, which is wild. Yeah, I think Taylor's going to lead into three. We'll get this all updated for you, get official. But, man, a lot happening there in this race. Drivers will work their way back. As we know, we've got victory lane presentations coming, the Skip Arbor Formula Race Series. Thank you so much for letting us. Working to the time here at the end, we'll have those drivers come in. But again, Augusto Soto Sharipa and Inter MS. Another win on the season. First win for Soto Sharipa after Elkin swept. Again, all results official, unofficial rather, because we know that uh, race control is going to be looking for a lot of video here. Kudos to the drivers getting through to the end. 17 drivers putting all 14 laps in. But we'll get a chance to watch Soto Sharipa get out of his race car and have that feeling of a driver who has been given an opportunity by the team owner Juan Garavaglia from Inter MS. Augusto was essentially locked and loaded to joined one of the fire halls in South Florida as a firefighter, but got a chance to go racing. He works at the shop Monday to Friday. They have a Formula uh, F4 team as well. He works with those drivers, the young drivers. He's a driver coach. He works on the cars. He does everything. And here he is climbing out of the car, folks. Augusto Soto Sharipa. Pumped. With the race win, his first. Absolutely fired up for that one. Had the speed, stayed out of trouble, probably first and foremost. 
Here's the team owners, Juan Guerra, Avaglia right there. Pumped to see it for Augie. G3 Argeros, a strong run as well to second. Leonardo Scorpioni in third. Folks, stay with us. Quick little break. When I come back, I'll be in victory lane. Time to celebrate the winners of race number two here at VIR. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome down here to Victory Lane as we get to set the cap up. Race number two of the Continental Tire VIR Grand Prix. Our good friend here from the IndyCar Ministry, Justice Jennings, is going to pass out our awards for us again. We've got some rookies here on the podium their first time. These first two drivers coming up their first time on the podium. In fact, their first winner as well. Folks, third place today for Zanella Racing, Leonardo Scorpione. Two on the podium for the first time, one with a first win. Great job for Leo there in the middle of the scrap all race long. Finishing in second, a great run yesterday. It was his, his uh, highest career finish yesterday in fourth, but now it's a P2. Second place for Jay Howard, driver development, G3 Argeros. Great run for G3. All right, folks, one more trophy, then we'll have the interview. Let's get this guy up here. Stand out of trouble, fantastic run. The winner, his first win in USF Juniors from Inter-MS, Agi Soto Sharipa. <laughs> Justice, take that trophy up there. Let me jump up there and have a quick chat. Augie, wins are sweet, but when you wait a long time for them, they're even sweeter. Tell me how you feel right now with, with your first victory. It's just so many emotions going through my head right now and through my body. I'm just super thankful for the team. I mean, this for me is everything. Um, like I told you yesterday, I think the, the game to this is just to wait it out, keep it on four wheels, be patient, and that's what we did. I mean, we had a fast car anyways. I can't thank the team enough for giving me this opportunity, and I hope that we're back on the podium later today. Congratulations. Let's see if we get the second one. So, again, big one there for Agi Soto Sharipa, getting that victory. And like you said, you got to wait it out. We saw it yesterday, I think, with Max Taylor as well. You've got to be patient, especially at this racetrack. A number of drivers did not show the patience there uh, over the course of the, the race, and there was a lot of drivers who finished tail in the field. It's really shook stuff up in the championship points as well, folks. Very tight on top right now in terms of the championship. But what a race for sure. Agi Soto Sharipa with the win. G3 Argeros, a fantastic run into second spot and Leonardo Scorpioni, his first trip to victory lane as well here on the podium. We've got the young guns here in the USF juniors program and good to see these drivers stay patient, stay out of trouble and get rewarded for that patience. Cars out of the way, trophies are down. Guys, grab that champagne, grip it and rip it. Celebrate the win for Soto Sharipa in race number two. We're back to do it one more time. A triple header here at VIR. Those of you tuning in on the broadcast, we'll see you back here for one more race. And again, on behalf of Anderson Promotions, folks, and Continental Tire, my name is Rob Howden. Bye for now.